What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Pandemic Update for Monday, October 16th, 2023. Starting off, we do have a couple COVID positives to share with you. Some COVID outbreaks, some news, and then we are going to uh, take a look at some data which will include wastewater today and then some state data as well i wanted to show you walgreens today but as of this uh, time of this recording they have not updated yet we will go to their page however refresh it again and maybe they will have updated so hopefully they will have updated once we uh, get to that starting off today u.s democratic center lafonza butler did test positive for covid yesterday she is from california currently she is 44 years old she was chosen to be the replacement for diane feinstein and you know if you click on the article it says she's mild she will quarantine work remotely you know the five day bit all of that business then for those who are fans of the show, The Young and the Restless, remember longtime character Paul Williams? I don't know, is he still on there? It's been on and off again. CBS said, oh no, we're going to can his act. Then they brought him back, then they canned him. The point is the actor, Doug Davison. He's a fantastic actor. I used to watch the show years ago. A uh, longtime player of Paul Williams from The Young and the Restless, tested positive for COVID sometime around October 12th. Then, after several days, I believe it's saying three days later, his case got worse, and he had to call 911 for difficulty breathing. He is currently 68 years old, so he's hospitalized. And this is a case we'll have to monitor, because let's click on the news story here. He was with Rick Springfield, I believe it was in the Dominican Republic. He was with Rick Springfield. And for those who do not know... Doc Davidson and Rick Springfield, they have been long-time friends. So, yes, this is something we'll have to watch. We'll have to see if Rick Springfield ends up uh, testing positive down the line. If we see it say illness, Rick Springfield canceling tour dates or whatever because of illness, we'll just know it's COVID because a lot of uh, musicians, entertainers, and so on are not allowed to disclose COVID. I posted a question about that on Twitter, and a lot of people said, you know what, it could be a legal reason in their contract, and that makes perfect sense. So if we hear it say illness after knowing he was with Doug Davison, being so close together, yeah, put two and two together, it would likely be COVID. Now, if it happens several months from now, that's a different story, and it still could be COVID. All right. COVID outbreak. We have two of them in Canada today. Thunder Bay COVID-19 outbreak at St. Joseph's Care Group, Care Group, Hogarth, Riverview Manor. Then we also have another COVID outbreak at Prince Edward Island. And it says um, COVID-19 outbreak at Prince Edward Island. Hospital impacts operations. So, as you know, yet again, another uh, COVID outbreak, and we tend to see a lot of them in Canada, and I am still working to fix, I'll show this to you real quickly, I am still working to make this more organized, the COVID outbreak archive, here it is right here, I still have uh, 83 topics that are still left in miscellaneous that will eventually make its way over here, I'm going to be working on that some more this week, and eventually they'll all be in here, and you're going to be surprised. There's a heck of a lot of Canadian outbreaks. For as many United States outbreaks there are, there's also a lot of Canadian ones that are in there. And there's some international ones as well. So I hope to have this categorized, uh, maybe finished by the end of this week. We'll have to see how busy I get with work, though. Because that, of course, is priority. Then the website comes second. All right, moving on to this now, this news item. Long-term Lung issues and lower quality of life plague COVID-19 survivors, new study warns. And I did skim through this, and a lot of this has to do with people who had uh, severe cases and ended up hospitalized. They're having a lot of long-term issues. This is something that's going on. And I know people who were hospitalized for COVID. They are seeing a whole bunch of specialists they never had to see before, such as heart doctors and lung doctors. And me personally, my case was... 
I guess you could say less severe. I, I don't know. It was a case of COVID. It was, you know, a moderate case of COVID. I was never hospitalized in 2020. I never had a positive result, but we know it's COVID. And I've actually had a couple doctors say, yeah, that likely probably was COVID. The point being here is I'm seeing doctors that I've never seen before. I'm seeing long-term issues that I never had before such as on Wednesday, I'll be going to my pulmonologist dash sleep doctor to go over the pulmonary function test that I took last week. And plus, I'm going to talk about some of the uh, morning issues uh, that have returned and that I'm dealing with. As you know, we've, we've discussed this in the past. No need to beat around the bush. But the point is, yes, I can confirm it does lead to lower quality of life post-COVID. And it's not with all cases, but... There's uh, millions of people out there dealing with that just here in the United States, not to mention what's going on around the world. Now we come to this, and I will likely add this to the outbreaks as well. I think we're in the outbreak section on my website. We might do a separate, uh, we might do a separate category just for these um, things that get canceled. Maybe we'll have like a section that says events canceled because of COVID. You know, maybe we need to do that. Christine and the Queens cancels remainder of 2023 tour due to illness. I've never actually heard of this group before, but if you have heard of this performance or uh, this group, it's been canceled because they are dealing with a COVID outbreak. I mean, it just keeps happening again and again. It's saying illness, but you know the deal. It's likely COVID. Because yet again, it's probably disclosed for a legal reason that they can't post that it is COVID. Alrighty, let's take a look now at some air quality data. And air quality across the country, I'm going to tell you right now, for the majority of the country, is not bad. However, you do have the West Coast, which it seems as the days go on. Because of wildfire issues, the West Coast just seems to be getting worse. Look at this. We see yellows. We see oranges. We see red. We see maroon up here in Washington State. That's over 400 in this case. Not good to see. That is really bad air quality. If you live in that area where it's in 400, I think this is a mountainous region. Yeah, please, if you're going outside, I know you don't want to hear it, but in this case, put a mask on. You just need to do that. All right, let's update the heat-related illness uh, EMS dashboard and what we will find here is, yes, look at this, it's trending even lower. So this is good. We're seeing less counties with above average heat-related illness. All right, drum roll, please. Did the Walgreens map update yet? Let's see. Nope, it's still showing last week's update, which last week, by the way, was 26.4%. All right, taking a look at CDC wastewater page, we know that the number of red, orange, and this light shade of blue, which is moderate to high levels of code, is dropping we suspect that number is going to start to rise again as we head into november now let's go over to the wastewater scan site let's take a look at a couple wastewater sites we'll just spend about two three minutes on this uh, norovirus across the country it's now coming up high if you haven't seen our wastewater update video over the weekend check it out we did do a lot of uh, discussion on norovirus in the, especially in the south. Let's take a look up in the northeast. Let's see what's going on in Portland, Maine, shall we? Portland, Maine at this time is showing here that the overall trajectory has been up for COVID since August, but since the start of October, there's a little bit of a uh, incomplete data here, but since the start of October, it has been dropping. So that's some good news for COVID. Influenza, that has also dropped. RSV has dropped. HMPV not an issue, MPOX is low at this time, norovirus is in the moderate category. Continuing along here, let's come down here to, what do you say we come down to the Greensboro area of North Carolina? How about Winston-Salem? Winston-Salem at this time for COVID is in the moderate level. Influenza at this time is low. RSV was rising. Now it is starting to drop some. Hopefully that continues. HMPV is low. No MPOX detected. And no norovirus issues at this time. Now continuing on, let's go out to the West Coast. Let's do a couple sites out in California, shall we? We'll come down to Southern California. And let's see what's going on in San Diego. I cannot recall the last time we've taken a look at San Diego. San Diego at this time, 
looks like it's holding steady. There was a big drop in September, in mid-September for COVID. Influenza is dropping at this time. RSV has been in an up-down, up-down pattern. No HMPV issues. And look at this. They did not have an MPOX case back in September. If you recall, there were several various sites across the country that did. Norovirus is flat at this time. Let's continue on with uh, California. And what do we say we come out here to Ontario, California, and see what's going on there. And for Ontario, California, COVID is low at this time, though it is starting to rise. Influenza is low, RSV is low, HMPV is low, and there are no MPOX issues at this time. And norovirus, though it is coming up low, it is starting to rise at this time. Alrighty, moving on. Taking a look now at the latest COVID variants. EG.5 is in the lead at 23.6%. Then comes HV.1, which is now up to a whopping 19.5%. I think we could see uh, HV.1 soon pass EG.5. FL151 is at 13.5%, and XVB116.6 is at 10.3%. Then we come over here to the latest uh, hospital data, and there are 16,766 admissions in the past week. And you can see overall, places are either stable or dropping at this time across most states in the U.S. Taking a look at New Jersey, 589 people in the hospital, 19 people on a ventilator, 63 people in the ICU, and then when we take a look at discharges, we can see 69 people were discharged from the hospital. Now we come to some really uh, good news. Taking a look here at, this is the um, Philadelphia Fire Department, they tweet out the EMS incidents each day and take a look at this this is the lowest number we have seen in some time and i believe last sunday was in the upper 600s as well look at this only 690 ems incidents reported yesterday however when we take a live look in at the suburbs i can tell you right now it is busy let's go over to montgomery county first here's uh montgomery county you can see we're seeing several things cardiac emergency multiple time respiratory emergencies then let's go over to Chester County. Look at this. Sick person, sick person, sick person, uh, seizures, heart problems. Then I thought I would share this with you. This was this morning in Montgomery County. I drove past the Abington Hospital, and well, this is the Emergency Trauma Center. And take a look at this picture. That's where the ambulances um, would be. Yeah, one, two, three, four ambulances, and I couldn't get a picture of the other side. There's actually a couple more ambulance ports there. They were lined up with ambulances there as well. There were six ambulances at once, so it is clearly a busy day in the Philadelphia suburbs right now. Alrighty, moving on. Uh, New York State today reports 1,414 new cases. New York State hospitalizations on the most recent update. It continues to uh, rapidly drop, 1,412. Remember, they started the week last week, 1,576, and the wave peak was at 1,711. So, uh, yeah, that's almost down 300 from the peak of this wave. And for the heck of it, let's also take a look at New York City. I want to know what the uh, current number is in New York City. I'm going to zoom this in so it's easier to see. And currently in New York City, uh, that's not New York City. Here we go. It just did a refresh. Here we go. New York City is at 507, and the wave peak in New York City was at 716. So it continues to drop. We may see uh, New York State rise ever so slightly tomorrow because, as you know, it's the start of a new week, but maybe not. If it continues to drop tomorrow, that's a really good sign. All right, moving on now, let's take a look at some international data. And I thought we would do this a little bit differently today. Let's start off with the places that are rising the most first. And you can see here, Uganda, 100% increase in COVID cases, 260% increase in Zimbabwe, Ecuador, that's coming up 2,500%. That's because it's 25 versus zero. Haiti had 38 versus zero. Then we come down here to the Netherlands, 33% increase. And that's 583 cases versus 437. Bulgaria, 26% increase. That's 2,200 cases versus 
1,744. And wow, big increase in deaths as well. 108% increase. 25 versus 12. Uh, Slovenia is seeing 411 cases versus 330. That works out to a 25 uh percent increase no deaths reported slovakia reported 152 versus 122 that's a 25 percent increase and once again no deaths reported there as well but again 25 percent increase in cases that's pretty significant poland 22 percent increase in cases and that's 1739 versus 1430 malaysia is seeing a 13% increase in cases. Afghanistan, 18% increase in cases with two deaths versus zero. Australia, cases are once again rising. 3,555 versus 3,172. That's a 12% increase. Vietnam, 12% increase. Singapore, 6% increase. And Germany, 5% increase in cases. Now, there are also some places that are seeing big drops in cases and let's uh, talk about them and we can see here Botswana 50 percent 53 percent decrease that's 9 versus 19 Italy 59 percent decrease that's really significant 17,987 versus 44,321 that works out to a 51 percent decrease in deaths as well 298 uh, excuse me, 73 versus 149. So it's good to see their deaths dropping. India cases down 60%. Brazil cases down 74%. And also a significant decrease in deaths. Only 50 versus 184. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Monday edition of the pandemic. I think we will have another pandemic update again tomorrow with hopefully Walgreens data. Will it come out? I don't know. We're probably just early. Sometimes it doesn't come out till 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So I will see everyone again next time. Until I see you next time, you got to do a few things. Thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And if you know anyone that needs to see this, by all means, share this with them. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Monday afternoon. Thanks for watching.